Whoa, the world's gone mad, people. And a lot of people are stuck indoors, which breaks my heart because without surfing, I go crazy, and I'm sure you guys are addicted too, which means you guys could potentially go crazy. I thought I'd shoot today's video in a response to all the requests I've been getting for people to actually train indoors or on land for their surfing during this time. So what I'm gonna do is head to a private wellness studio to catch up with my old mate Donal who helped me out when I injured my neck in terms of rehab. And we even go and do a little session with him. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. I haven't worked out for about six months. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't worked out for a long time. So this is gonna be interesting, let's go. Donal is a high-level corrective exercise specialist based out of Sydney. His physiological knowledge is super advanced and he and I strongly believe that with the right program, time in the gym can help your surfing. Well, first of all, you gotta understand the movement that you're trying to transfer. So the surfing position is either a lunge stance or more of a squat stance. You certainly are gonna bend, you're certainly gonna twist. Um, and then there's a bit of pulling, obviously, if you're paddling out. Most of the surfers I've worked with, medial stability in the hips, so getting those glutes to fire, getting the hamstrings, the adductors to be able to absorb movement going down so then, then they can move out of that position. It's also very important that the, the lateral stabilizers and the, and the movers that work across the body like slings. So we look at the adductors, internal obliques, external oblique that goes into the pec fibers that help when you're paddling, but also helps to generate that rotational torque and force you need. When you're coming up, you're changing your center of gravity. So the action center starts in the midsection. It doesn't start on the response in the foot like a skateboarder would. So what's different there is that the, the movement sequence has to be generated from a core sequence out, not from a ground force reaction impulse coming through the foot, through the kinetic chain. You have to learn how to load, to explode, to load, to move on. And the load explode is basically teaching people how to generate that eccentric loading, that, so going down into the movement and being stable at the bottom so you have that momentum to move. If you can't load in or you can't turn on the midsection, you're going to have a problem carrying out that type of maneuver. So today, Kale has asked me to put together some surf exercises that might be beneficial to help transference of rotation, getting the core strong, getting the hips strong, and help you in the surf. So here's five of my favorite exercises. So our first exercise, number one, a multi-direction lunge with an offset weight. This will challenge Kale's midsection and how he has to stabilize when the weight is transferring across his body. So a multi-directional lunge is we're going out at a kind of a north aspect. We're going straight out in front. We do opposite leg. We alternate. Then we go out at a 45 degree angle. With that, we need to make sure the chest, the hips, and the body stay straight looking forward. What's internally rotating or turning is the hip joints. We step back to the center. We go the opposite side, now we go laterally. So when we step out to the side, we're now gonna use a different mechanism of loading up through the hip joint, bring the hips back, sit back on the back leg as such. Next, we're gonna go in the reverse diagonal. Again, keeping the weight here on one side, so one side of the torso is working more than the other. So they go through the oblique angles, and then the last phase is stepping backwards in a lunge pattern too. So this exercise is really going to help with um, generating force out of the pocket or getting out of a, a lower position. It's going to really help all the different stabilizers of the knees, the adductors, external rotators, those structures that are put under rotational torque when you're turning, when you're moving, when you're popping up. Um, so a great exercise also for core because we're using the weight away from the midsection. If we put a bar on our back, this exercise becomes easier. If we hold two dumbbells, this exercise becomes easier. You can pick up a stone or a sandbag and hold it on one side. It teaches you different strategies. It's yeah. learning different strategies. It's not like every way is going to be the same. Okay, number two, our next exercise, a single arm, one strap, legged row and hip extension. Sounds fancy, it is fancy. It works the whole glute, posterior chain, really gets the glutes to fire. When you drive up, there's different arm positions so you can alter the different row positions. So we're hanging back from the, the suspension straps or Roman rings, whatever you have access to. You can even use a rope and driving through the hip and then following through with the arm pull to get full extension into the spine.
So this one here is really great for stabilizing those glutes and for the power again and the back muscles to actually help paddling, but also again for generating force to the midsection. It really works the posterior sling and the cross-functional lines at the back of our body. So really helping us to keep those backs stable and strong. Next, number three, one-legged jackknife. Um, with the one-legged jackknife, we're really getting a lot of the anterior part of the body. We're getting the anterior slings, getting into the pecs, getting into the core. But also when we've gone up with the one leg, we're really working those adductors, quads, and those muscles in the front of the knee that have to stabilize a lot of forward momentum going into the knee. We can also now use different positions with the free leg. We can abduct it out, we can tuck it under, we can do a thread through, and you can even do windmills. So this is one of our exercises that has that tilting equilibrium response in the body where it's kind of it's coming on and off as we move the ball forward and back. So really helps you kind of tune in a little bit more balance that's specific to your surfing. This is hard. <laughs> Number four, hip extension knee flexion. Again, another great exercise for protecting the hips, generating force through the, the back extension chain, which helps you get up and into those movements that you want to create when you're cutting and, and you're uh, uh, surfing. One of the things that we want to do here is also start to change the free leg position to either increase the load or decrease the load. We can also make it more complex by moving the leg out and this puts some torque and rotational forces on the hamstring and the support structures around the back of the knee, which a lot of surfers also get some issues around, which weakens up the whole structure, so then leaves you more susceptible to ACL or meniscus tears or rotational tears. I just did this whole thing. No, you didn't. I no. did. <laughs> and we, I wasn't recording. <laughs> Number five, we have Superman. Balance challenge, but we're really working on the back extensor chain, the posture muscles. So really keeping the spine and the shoulders and the upper quarter in a good position while you paddle out so that you could have a good paddling position. So much injuries happen with the shoulders and neck by not having surfers be able to stabilize their neck and their spine. Yeah, yeah, Kale has uh, experienced some of the rehab uh, protocols that we've done and, and gladly to say he's back out in the water enjoying life again. And, it's uh, simple to do once you have the right tools at reach. Step aside, use your hands to count back to four back. <laughs> Go again, keep your legs up strong. That's it, hold that position. That's it, keep the chest up. Okay, lock the position. Once you lose that break in the body, you gotta keep that extension okay. over the parallel line. Chest, that's it. <laughs> when you drop your legs in that hand, you drop your legs right away. Yeah. Okay, good. That's hard, you were doing it so easy. So when, when always doing new exercises, it's very important to either be able to see, get some response back of where your body positions are. So record yourself, look back on your recording and compare the pair, what we've seen here, and rewind, slow down, whatever you need to do. But also be aware of midsection and getting the core to turn on. It's very important that we have a stable core. So if you don't have a healthy gut, you might have to check out Kale's movie called The Gut Movie because you can't fire your core if you don't have a gut. So you gotta be really careful about making sure that you're activating this in the right way. Uh, a lot of people that brace down are using an outer unit strategy. We need both on the job, okay? So there's a very um, subtle way to do that. And uh, if you uh, wanna find out more, you can go to my Instagram. Whew, I'm cooked guys, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I hope this workout helps you during this weird time that we see the world in right now. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, comment below what else should we be doing, especially now, but also into the future. I will, oh, join me on Instagram as well, at Cal's Broccoli, make sure you check out Donal too, I'll put some links down below. If you can hear me, I'm like, Parfait, this is a legitimate workout. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Woo!